What is going on, everybody? It is March 2nd, Friday. So, happy, happy Friday to everybody. 10 games slate tonight. Um, I don't, I'm not in love with it so far, but, uh, you know, there should be a lot of options. Uh, last night didn't go well. Um, you know, me and my uh, financier took a deep look into... Uh, that Heat Lakers game had a very specific thought process in mind for how that was going to go. Uh, what we didn't anticipate, however, well, we can just pull it up quick. Um, didn't anticipate the Lakers shooting 59% from the field and 55% uh, from three on a team that had like a 95th percentile defense uh, with these particular guys healthy. So. This flew in the face of uh, everything that I thought was going to happen. Lakers just couldn't miss, and uh, that's going to make a game pretty difficult. When the when a team can go 16 of 29 from three, you're going to be in some trouble. Uh, we had a ton of white side, um, which didn't go well. We were pretty neutral on Olenek, but either way, I mean, 13 minutes, didn't make a bucket. Just bad, really, really bad. Um... Josh Richardson somehow being minus 30 is just super horrendous for a guy that's probably not supposed to like have that sort of impact. Top 100 lineups, all 100 of them had Carl uh, Anthony Towns. Um, he was my fourth choice center last night, which is kind of a bummer. Um, but Towns was the only guy in the top 100 lineups that was in all of them. And then you had a spread of Bogdan, who we were neutral on with healed. You know, just called both of those guys a coin flip. So I'm kind of happy there. Uh, Damari Carroll, Ben Simmons, IT found found a shooting stroke with the rest of the Lakers. Um, so he had a really monster night. Uh, turns out that the best Heat guy to play last night was Bam, who I probably had the least amount of. Uh, so rolling those dice did not help whatsoever. Um, you know, it happens. Uh, I thought all signs pointed to a really good defensive performance from the Heat, and they just the Lakers just shot them right out of that almost immediately. First five, six minutes of the game were dreadful. Just uh, They couldn't miss. I watched Dragic mix two opposite corner threes, one of which wide open, like, Shots just weren't falling early. So, we're on to Friday. Uh, first game up is Magic hosting the Pistons. Uh, Magic are two and a half point underdogs at home. Uh, 105.5 implied total is 15th. Um, this is a relatively neutral game, so I'm kind of I'm kind of interested in digging in. Uh, Aaron Gordon, 7,700 on FanDuel, 7,300 on DK. I actually don't mind this all that much. He's been shooting more threes, which is a benefit against the Pistons. Um, I don't think that Blake is sort of himself right now. And uh, I think that bodes well for Aaron Gordon. Because um, Aaron Gordon sort of has, like, Blake's athleticism from six years ago. And... I think that could be a benefit for him. Um, he needs 38 as a baseline. Um, has had two games in the 40s. I think this could be a good spot for him. I'm going to say Gordon's a three. Uh, I think there's some upside in that price, actually. Uh, Evan Fournier, 5,800 and 5,700. Um, been relatively quiet recently. Uh Got up to 41 a couple nights ago. Had a 36 before the break. Um, again, the, the threes make it interesting for me. It makes me have a little bit of interest in Fournier. So I'm going to say that he is a three as well. Um, Vooch, 7,500 on FanDuel, 7,600 on DK. Uh... I like this a lot. Um, 
since the return of the all or you know since coming back from the break you know Vooch had a 38 or a 39 point game you know both of those would be right at value uh, I think he has the ability to accumulate some stats tonight especially if he gets lucky and um, you know a couple of his threes fall uh, I think that Vooch is like he's like a two and a half for me uh, I think that I'll have uh, probably greater than expected exposure on him tonight. Uh, Simmons, 4,900 on FanDuel, 4,900 on DK. Not totally wild about it, but he did just go for 40 recently. Um, Not the biggest three-point shooter, though, so I'm going to say that he's a four. I don't think that I want to go down much further, but uh, Augustine is a four as well. Just nothing nothing really interesting there. Does bomb threes, so uh, I do think that in a GPP he could be interesting. Went for 32 uh, a couple nights ago. Should be a pretty solid return on 4,900. Pistons, uh, 108 implied total is ninth. Um, two and a half point favorites at home. We have Drummond, uh, 10-5 on FanDuel, 9,900 on DK. 10-5 is pretty legitimate. Um, Orlando gives up a ton of shots at the rim, which obviously is the place that Drummond spends the most time. Um... He would need 55 plus for you to go really crazy. You know, gets there with, you know, he's a GPP guy for sure. Uh, I definitely like the matchup. Price is not bad. As as ridiculous as it sounds, you know, one of those centers is going to have a pretty big game. Now, Blake, 7,400 on FanDuel, 7,400 on DK. Uh, He's been so not good. 18 fantasy points, 17, 24, 26. Um, You know, he got to 41 before the break, which is, like, what you're looking for, but he's just been atrocious. And I don't really know how to, to reconcile that. Salary is down to 7,400. It was 9,200 just a week, two weeks ago, right before the break. I don't really know if, if this is just like a slump or a new level for Blake, which has got to be terrifying for the Pistons. He grades out so well. That's sort of the problem I have here. I think that I need to neuter him a little bit tonight. Um, So I'm gonna I'm gonna lop a bunch off of him. I I think that I'm I'm way too high on him. I think that's a little bit more realistic. I'm gonna say that he's a four. He's just been so atrocious lately that I'm starting to think that something's not right with him. And part of that makes me is what makes me a little bit more interested in uh, in Aaron Gordon, and I'm rarely interested in Aaron Gordon. Uh, Reggie Bullock, forty seven hundred and forty six hundred. <sighs> Magic do cut off threes a lot, which makes me a little concerned. That's sort of Bullock's bread and butter, um, and you you need Bullock to be up in the thirties in a GPP if you're looking for it. So uh, I'm gonna say Bullock is a four. Ish Smith, 6,300 on FanDuel, 5,300 on DK, which is interesting. Minutes have been trending down. Uh, only got 24 in his most recent one. Um, so I'm going to say that he is a 4. Game kind of fits him as he's not much of a 3-point shooter. But uh, I have a little bit... I'm a little leery of those minutes. I think he's uh, GPP only. And then Stanley Johnson, 4,600 on FanDuel, 4,300 on DK. Uh, put up 35 in his uh, his most recent game, which is nice. I don't see this as a game where he would be going 
absolutely crazy, though. Uh, so I'm going to say that he is also a four. I think Drummond would be my only focus coming out of the Pistons. And we've got Philly. Broke their losing streak against the Cavs last night. Um, on a back-to-back, -back, but at home. Hosting the Hornets. Uh, Four-point favorites at home right now. So let's just scoop up. Nah, it'll be easier to type it. Ben Simmons, 8,900 on FanDuel, 8,600 on DK. Uh, Hornets do give up a lot of mid-range opportunities, which I like. Um, Simmons went for 47.8 last night. It's a solid game for him. Um, has gotten up into the 50s and 60s uh, recently. I don't have much concern with having Simmons here. Um, especially if we find out that MKG isn't going to play. I think I looked at this earlier, but probably should do it again. I'd like to see what their defense looks like when MKG is off the floor. It's questionable right now, uh, but even if he's at like 80%, that kind of interests me. Um, so they've got a 53rd percentile defense just generally. Um, if Kid Gilchrist is off the floor. What happens? 32. Okay, so they, they go down pretty dramatically when MKG doesn't play. Uh, I'm going to say that Simmons is a three, and I'll have a little bit of more of a focus on him if we get any news that MKG is out. And we should have that sort of news long before uh, tip-off. Dario Saric is 7,100 on FanDuel, 6,400 on DK. So 35 would be your threshold. He has not gone off much at all. Has no games that you would even call like six Xers in uh, in the past three weeks. Um, I don't find this game to be very appealing for him. Um, not a ton of upside, I don't think. Uh, he's a four for me, and I'll have a very minimal amount of him. Then Embiid, uh, I assume he's playing. Um... You know, he has been playing in back-to-backs lately. You know, the most two, most recent back-to-backs he's played, he, you know, or had the opportunity to play, he has played. So that does make me um, feel good about him playing tonight. I have no expectation that he wouldn't. 10-7 uh, on FanDuel, 9,400 on DK. Uh, he had 44 last night. I'd like to see how he's done if they've played it all this year and how he's played. Hasn't played them at all this year. Okay, great. I kind of like him, but that price point is just rough. I mean, you're looking for, you know, 55 plus out of Embiid. I think he gets there, but... He's been much below that more often than not. I don't I don't necessarily love the matchup for him either. You know, I think Dwight is one of the few guys that are strong enough to hang with him. Sorry, that was a really loud uh, coffee slurp. Um Yeah, I'm going to say Embiid is a 4. I just between the back-to-back, -back, uh, you know, if, if he's feeling himself and that he can get that three-point stroke going, that might be a little interesting. But otherwise, uh, I don't necessarily like him up against Howard. We've got Redick. 4,900 on FanDuel, 5,200 on DK. I went for 26 last night. That seems to be sort of like his ceiling. Um... I'm going to say that he's a 3 on FanDuel and a 4 on DK. Covington, a uh, little bit of a recovery last night. He had 28 and a half. Um, needed 41 minutes to do it, though, so it's hard to get too enthused about him. Um, he's just a straight 4, as is uh, Marco Bellinelli. What am I? At least it's Friday, everybody. And then uh, same thing for TJ McConnell. Uh, just a four for me. 
Now, Hornets, 105.5 implied total is 15th. Uh, you guys know I'm you know, pretty nervous about anybody going up against Philly. I think they're pretty good defensively. Uh, but Hornets coming in, you know, they're coming off a of back-to-back, -back, so this is their third game in four nights. Um, hold on, I said that weird. So they had a back-to-back, -back, had a night, had last night off. Now they've got their third game in four nights. Uh, they're not coming off a of back-to-back. Um, yeah, so I'm going to approach this with a little tempered enthusiasm. But... FanDuel pricing for these guys is kind of good. So, Kemba Walker, 7,800 on both sites. Um, so, for FanDuel, that's exceptional. Um, you know, 40 would be that threshold. Um, he gets into the mid 40s to high 40s with a pretty regular occurrence. Uh, while the matchup's tricky, um, being able to get Kemba under 8,000 in a game that they're going to want to win um, pretty aggressively. They still have some sort of uh, aspirations for playoffs. 538 NBA odds. Let's see how minimal it is. I could be just talking out of my ass. Yeah, like they've got a 27% chance of making the playoffs. Um, so being able to pick up or like attempt to pick up a win, they're going hard here. They're teetering on the edge of being, of having absolutely no chance. But for right now, you know they're alive. So I'm gonna say Kemba's a three. That price being under eight thousand is kind of nuts. How much did it drop? Yeah, like he was nine thousand two games ago. He's down twelve hundred dollars. Something to keep in mind there. Uh, Dwight is seventy five hundred on Fanduel, seventy three hundred on DK. Um, you know, he's had two 45-point games since coming back from the break. Uh, buoyed with, you know, a couple 27s and 28s. He can accumulate. Um, I, I I like Dwight at 7,500. This is a guy whose salary was 8,500, 8,700, 9,000 just a week ago. Um, makes it look really appealing for GPPs. Nick Batum, on the other hand, does not have a good salary. 7,300 on FanDuel. Um, 6,500 on DK. Batum. Been playing really well. You know, 37 in his last game. Uh, he had two back to back 40 pointers. But I think 73 is like the high end of anything you would ever want Batum for. I'm going to say that he's a four. And I will probably not have much of him at all. Marvin Williams is at 3,800, uh, 4,200 on DK. He's been playing less minutes in certain situations. Drops down to 21 or 22. Sometimes he's up to 30. Uh, but I think that at 3,800 for a guy that's a part of the rotation, um, Marvin Marvin. Marvin Marvin. That's, that's a new one. <laughs> I think that... Uh, you can make a case for him in GPPs. Um, still just a four for me because there's only so much upside in, you know, a $3,800 Marvin Williams, but he can make some, you know, he can provide a little bit of value um, at power forward. And then uh, I do have MKG projected to play right now, uh, but I think that it is very realistic that he would not, um, but I don't have any interest in... MKG or Kaminsky or Lamb right now. If MKG is out, I'd be fine with going um, with a little bit more Jeremy Lamb. But for right now, keep an eye on the news for MKG and Cody Zeller. Uh, but as of right now, both are questionable. To the Hawks, which, oh, I have that. <laughs> Could you imagine? Right now I have that line in backwards, and I've got the Hawks as the 12 and a half point favorites at home against the Warriors, which fucking not happening. Let's try that. Because that's ridiculous. There we go. That looks a little bit more realistic. 
So Hawks are 12 and a half point underdogs at home to the Warriors. This is about as big of a mismatch as we can have. Uh, approach this game with caution. Um, I don't want to go any further than this. So let's say Prince 5400 on FanDuel, 6000 on DK. Uh, he's been good. His last two games, 35 and 40, both of which would be um, 6, 7, 8x type games. So, you know, I like it for him, um, but he's just a 4 for me on FanDuel. I wouldn't touch him on DK at 6,000. Uh, Schroeder, 7,100 on FanDuel, 6,000 on DK. Uh, not a ton of upside in that number. He's also just a 4. John Collins, 6,300 on FanDuel, 5,900 on DK. You know, you need way more than 30 to be happy with that. And uh, I don't think that he can get there. Um, I'm worried about his proclivity for fouls in this game. Bazemore, 5,600 FanDuel, 5,400 DK. He needs 27 just to get to where we need to be. Can get into the 30s. Yeah, it's hard to like much of anything for the Hawks. I can't, I can't see scenarios where they hang in this game. Like, if we say that Schroeder's the best guy on the Hawks... And, you know, that's probably up for debate, but I think, you know, just spitballing. Would he be, like, the seventh best guy on the Warriors? That's scary to think about. We'll go to Golden State. Uh, Warriors, 12.5 point favorites on the road. Uh, number one implied total. Someone is going to eat up the Hawks. Let's try to figure out who it's going to be. Draymond is 8,100 on FanDuel, 7,700 on DK. Went for 45 in his last one, had 59 right before the break. Um, this feels like less of a Draymond game for me. Doesn't seem like a situation where he's going to get his motor up. Um, I'm going to say that he is just a 3. Durant is 10-2 on FanDuel, 10-2 on DK. Um, he's someone you need in the upper 50s. Uh, just been in the low 40s since he's uh, gotten back from the break. But I think this is a good spot for him. Um, we might need Durant to hit value in three quarters. The blowout potential is very real. Uh, so it's hard to go more than a three. But... I like the matchup for Durant. Uh, Clay, 6,500 and 6,700. Went for 40 a couple nights ago. That's what you need out of a minute GPP. Otherwise, he's been relatively neutral. Um, I don't trust him all that much. So uh, Clay is a 4 for me. And then Steph, 9,400 and 9,800. Had the 68-point game in the first game back from the break. Otherwise, he's just been, uh, you know, underperforming his salary. Oh, man. Have they played it all this year? Nope. Nothing special from him last year either. How did Durant do against them last year? Nothing special. Yeah, I'm going to say Steph's just a three. Uh, you need to be cognizant of the blowout. I think that you can get solid games out of Curry and Durant tonight, but um, you can't. it's going to be really hard to expect them to play enough minutes to go really bananas. Bulls, 105.5 uh, implied total is 15th. They are uh, one and a half point underdogs at home against the Mavs, which is surprising. Uh, I haven't heard any news on the Bulls, so we should expect you know business as usual um, for them. 
Mavs do tend to give up some threes, so that is something to keep an eye on. Levine, 7,900 on FanDuel, 7,100 on DK. Probably need to give him a boost. I know he's just been uh, underrepresented in my numbers recently. Um... So, I mean, you're looking for, you know, mid-40s and higher out of Levine. He has not been very good lately. But, you know, this is probably a better spot for him. <sighs> no reason I think the shot can't fall. I'll say Levine is a three. I don't mind him tonight. David Nawaba is 54, yeah, 5,400 on DK, 4,800 on FanDuel. 25 will be the goal. He had 33 in his last outing. Had a 39-point game right after the break. He's been getting an additional run, and, um, you know, that's helpful for him. I like Nawaba uh, as, a, as a value play. I'll say he's also a three. Larry Markinen. I'm going to ding him a little bit. So that he doesn't pop up like crazy for me. Although today will probably be the game where he goes nuts. Um, but he has just not been what you were looking for. Uh, marking in at 6,000 on both sites. 30 is the baseline and you want way more than that. Um, his best game <clears throat> in the past three weeks has been 31.6. Probably need to spell Nawaba's name right. Um... Markkanen is just a four for me. Breaks my heart. Uh, Dallas does like to give up threes, which is Markkanen's bread and butter, so it wouldn't shock me if he had like a hot shooting night, but I'm going to temper my expectations for him. <clears throat> uh, Chris Dunn, 6,700 on FanDuel, 6,400 on DK. Put up a pretty good stinker uh, a couple nights ago. But at 6,700, you're looking 33 and change. Um, had a 40-point game, you know, less than a week ago. He's going to get probably a lot of Dennis Smith Jr., who is not the best defender. Uh, I actually like Chris Dunn here um, just because of that price point. I think there's upside there. I don't think that... Dallas is any particular great chicks defensively. So I'm going to say that Chris Dunn is a three. Who else is in that area for him? Yeah, like I would like him probably more than Jamal Murray. Um, I would probably like him more than Rubio. So I think that I don't, I don't really have much of a problem with having some Chris Dunn there. Denzel Valentine is 4,800 on FanDuel, 4,800 on DK. I think his price has grown a bit too much. Yeah, so at 4,000, he was a great play. At 4,800, it's going to be hard to, to bring back any value. Uh, he's just a four. Cool. Um, and then finally, Felicio. We've got 4,100 on FanDuel, 4,000 on DK. Went for 26 in the most recent game. Um, that's probably like his ceiling. I'm going to say that he is just a four. We'll go to Dallas. Mavs, 107 implied total is 10th. Um, one and a half point favorites. Uh, I like this matchup a lot for Dallas, so I'm hoping some stuff stands out. Dallas is last. They, they don't turn the ball over at all, which is kind of surprising for Dennis Smith. Okay. Harrison Barnes. 6,200 on FanDuel. 6,700 on DK. Um... Bulls give up a ton of threes. Barnes needs 31 at 5x. He put up 40 in his most recent game, which I like. Gets to 36. Um, you know, I can easily see Barnes 
repeating that 40 point performance. Uh, I think the matchup is pretty good for him. My only concern is just the simple fact that both of these teams have nothing to play for. Although, uh, with Cuban already getting fined for talking about tanking, it makes me feel a little bit more like um, Barnes will see the minutes that matter. Uh, I'm going to say that Barnes is a 2 on FanDuel. I really like him here. And that's mostly just a play on the fact that I think the Bulls are bad. Uh, Dennis Smith, 6,200 as well on FanDuel, 6,400 on DK. So you're looking for sort of the same threshold. Um, I don't think that he has as much upside as a GPP play, but I really like Dennis Smith in cash. I think it's a pretty safe matchup for him. And... Even if Dallas is tanking, Dennis Smith Jr. more than anything is going should be getting minutes. I mean, they're the he's their point guard of the future, so you want him to get as much run as he can. Wes Matthews, forty nine hundred on Fanduel, five thousand on DK. Um, hasn't had that Wes Matthews going off game recently. He's just been in the mid twenties over and over again. Uh, this could be the spot for him. Uh, he shoots 55% of his shots from threes. Bulls give them up in droves, particularly above the break. So uh, I think Wes Matthews is also a two on FanDuel. I don't mind having a bunch of these guys at all. He's a three on DK. Actually, you know what? I'm fine with saying that he's that's just flat, too. The price isn't bad on DraftKings. Dwight Powell, who's been playing really well uh, for the Mavs, 5,600 on FanDuel, 6,100 on DK, which is kind of a problem. Um, but had a 42-point game in his most recent outing uh, before the break, 31, 33, 33, 34. All of those would be um, higher than value for him. Uh, I think that he's a really safe play and still shows some upside seems to be getting additional minutes now that they've thinned the rotations um i like powell a lot again on fanduel i think the powell is a two and i think that he's a three on DraftKings. really aggressively on uh, the mavs today i'm gonna have to dig in a little bit more just to make sure i'm not totally crazy but that's what happens when you play the tanking bulls uh yogi farrell is 4,200 on FanDuel, 4,400 on DK. Uh, only played 25 minutes in the most recent game, so I'm a little weary of his minutes. Um, but again, this is a game that fits him. Um, has gotten up into the mid-30s for games, so there's, there's definitely upside in his performance, especially at that number. Uh, but I can only say that he's a 3. I don't expect a lot out of Dirk. Uh, he's just a four for me. Did get up to 35 recently, but that's a very specific game. And then finally, Berea. 6,100 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. Uh, he's just priced too high. He's a four. Grizzlies. It pains me to even type that in sometimes. Now, granted, they were the bells of the ball two nights ago, um, having uh, the Jamichael Green, Mark Gasol, Jarrell Martin stack was uh, pretty good. If you got Harrison in there too, even better. Um, Harrison is questionable, so keep an eye there. If for some reason he's out, Mario Chalmers is going to look absolutely amazing. Um. Grizzlies, 102.75 implied total is 19th. I have them as uh, three and a half point underdogs at home. Harrison at 7,000 is just terrifying. That's just too much for him. Um, for someone that isn't necessarily the best scorer, while I know he's been better this year, uh, 
I think that Harrison is just a straight four. Jermichael Green, though, 6100 on FanDuel, 6600 on DK. That's a, a great price for him on FanDuel. A um, couple games right there at that number. Uh, I'm going to say that he's a three. And that three is just on FanDuel. He's a four on DK. Jarrell Martin, 5,200 on FanDuel, 4,500 on DK, so that's kind of nice. Um, 25 gets you where you need to be. Put up 35 uh, in the most recent game. When he gets big minutes, you know, he's got a shot. Uh, did have a 32-point game right before the break. Wow, both of those you'd be happy with. I think that he's relatively safe. Um, I'm going to say that Martin is a 3. Marc Gasol. 8,500 on FanDuel, 7,900 on DK. What did they move his price to? Yeah, brought him back up another 1,300. Sneaky, sneaky jerks. Um, you know, Gasol went for 51 in the most recent game, 42 before that. But, you know, he was such an overwhelming play because of his price point. Now that he's at 8,500, he's just a four. Uh don't have a ton of love for Dylan Brooks. He doesn't really fill up the stat sheet. Um, but pay attention to news here. You never know what sort of uh, guys are going to get run for the Grizzlies. So if you see Harrison out, um, it's going to be a Chalmers night. Now Denver, um, 106.25 implied total is 13th. Uh, Memphis is solid defensively. Um but I think that there's some value here for Denver. It's just a little blurry. Everybody looks pretty comparable. Still looking at a minutes limit for Millsap. I've got him in for 24 right now. They don't have a minimum salary anymore at FanDuel, so I think that he is uh, you know, able to be ignored. Uh, we probably don't want to go any lower than uh, Jokic here. Although I think Plumlee could be sneaky in that he can get more minutes. So let me grab him as well. So first up is Will Barton. Uh, Barton is 7,800 on FanDuel, 7,200 on DK. Um, has been playing pretty well. Had a 50-point game um, recently. But otherwise, it's been very high 30s, low 40s. I'd be perfectly okay with Will Barton in cash, but I don't see a ton of upside for him in a GPP sense. So I'm going to say that he's a 3. Gary Harris is 6,700 on FanDuel, 6,200 on DK. Um, he has just not blown up. It's something about it where he has not just he hasn't been able to find much of a flow. Uh, I don't think Millsap being back is going to help that. Uh, I think Gary Harris is just a four. Jamal Murray, 6,900 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. Uh, I don't like him with Millsap back. There shouldn't be too much overlap, but, you know, you need 35 as a baseline for Murray. Um, did get up to 46 right before the break, but for right now, um, I think upside is limited. If we find out that Harrison is out, um, I think that Murray would look pretty interesting at point guard just because he would get a lot of Chalmers, which I think that he's just way too athletic for. And uh, they really don't have many other options. So that should be a spot where Murray could capitalize. Um, but for right now, Harrison's in, and uh, I think that Murray's just a four. Wilson Chandler, 5,600 on FanDuel, 5,400 on DK. I mean, this guy, he was a, a corpse to start this season. And now, you know, two games in the mid-40s, uh, went for 37 in the most recent game. It's hard for me to want to look at him at this $5,600 price point. There were times this year where he was 3900 and I thought it was disgusting. Um, but it's hard to go against sort of how he's been playing as of late. I mean, upside makes it look tricky, 
I think that I would probably be okay with Chandler and Cash now. Uh, I'll say that he's a three. Now, Jokic, 9,600 on FanDuel, 9,700 on DK. Um, so you want more than 50. He did have that stretch of four games above 50. He only went for 32 in the most recent game. It doesn't strike me as, like, the best matchup. Um, have they played it all this year? I don't know why I'm clicking on Gasol. Where's Jokic? So we went for 50 in November and then had an awful game against them in January. 87-78 slog. Uh, I don't want to go crazy on Jokic. He's a four, and I think that Plumlee is a four in GPP scenarios. Bucks, 108.75 implied total is sixth. And they are four and a half point favorites at home against the Pacers. Uh, Jabari expected to play a couple extra minutes now. I've got him in for 28, which makes him a little bit uh, a little bit interesting. Uh, Pacers pretty solid on D actually, so it's hard to get super excited. I probably wouldn't want to go any further down than Henson. So let's look at Giannis. Uh, Giannis is 11,000 on FanDuel, 10-1 on DK. Um, I want to know, how has Giannis been against them? Because I feel like this is a really good matchup for him. He went for 57 in January, and then a couple nights later, 35. Only took 8 shots, 14 free throws. Okay, so he can get to the line here. Um, went for 72 a couple nights ago. Had a 70-pointer right before the break. Yeah, I'm okay with Giannis here. That's a three. How high do they are they here? Where's Milwaukee? Eh, near the bottom. That's kind of scary. <sighs> okay. 7,500 for Middleton. 6,600 for him <clears throat> on DK. Been quiet as of late. Hasn't had any major, major breakout games. This doesn't seem like it would be a situation where it would happen. Uh, so I'm going to say that Middleton is a four. Bledsoe, 7,600, 7,200 on DK. Um, 38 is the baseline. Did have the 55 pointer here. I don't like it. It's a four. Jabari, uh, 4,900 on FanDuel, 4,700 on DK. So 25 is your threshold for Jabari. I've got him in 28 minutes. Um, he should see a bunch of, like, Thad or, I don't know, maybe Trevor Booker if he's active. So the thought of Jabari kind of excites me. Put up 31 in 24 minutes a couple nights ago. You know, you'd be more than happy with 31. So I'm going to say Jabari is a three. Um that's really a good spot for him. And then finally, Henson is just uh, just a four for me. Yeah, 5,600 on FanDuel, 4,600 on DK. Um, I don't want to go too crazy there. Go to the Pacers. 104.25 implied total is 17th. Victor Oladipo is 10,000 on FanDuel. He's 8,900 on DK. Um, Bucks give up the most shots at the rim still for the entire year. What do people shoot at the rim against them? So middle of the pack at the rim. Okay. Oladipo would need 50. Put up 50 in the most recent game. Um, I think this is a good game for Oladipo. I'm going to say that he's a three. You know, it's a, it's a game that both teams want to win, which makes me um, a little bit more interested in some of the top flight guys. 
Uh, Thad Young, 6,400 on FanDuel, 6,200 on DK. Uh, he's been playing better as of late. Uh, 35 point game, 41, 39. Those are all really good for Thad. Um, I actually think he's a three as well. Should get a lot of Jabari on defense, which is uh, beneficial. Corey Joseph, 4,700 on FanDuel, 4,600 on DK. Put up the 3.9 burger uh, in the most recent game, which is fucking dreadful. Um, but, you know, has gotten up to 36 or 42, so he's a GPP guy. Uh, I don't love it. I think he's just a four cry Joseph. Probably wanted to cry after that last one. Um, I don't think that's a, a good spot. Uh, Bojan is 5,300 and 5,600. You know, he could always get hot, but I don't think this is a spot for it. That's a four for me. And then uh, finally, Miles Turner is 6,000 on FanDuel, 6,600 on DK. Turner only played 16 minutes in the most recent game, coming off of a 36 point game, or a 36 minute game where he put up 51. Um, that 6,000 price tag is kind of nuts. Uh, this is a guy that can easily be in the 30s, has gone up to 50. I like Miles Turner a ton on FanDuel. Um, I'm going to say that he's a 3 and a 4 on DK, but it wouldn't shock me to have uh, an overwhelming amount of Miles Turner compared to the field. Now, as a basketball game, a Wizards Raptors is great. Uh, I'm not sure that we're going to love it as much from a fantasy perspective, but. It doesn't look like OG Ananobi is going to be playing, so I would like to see how the Raptors' defense falls off without him. Um, I know their second unit is just exceptional, so it might not be as big of a drop-off, but they're an 83rd percentile defense right now as a, as a whole, and when Ananobi is off, they only drop to 77. Okay, so that shouldn't be too big of a difference defensively. Uh, Washington is a 10, or they're three point underdogs at home. Uh, 106.7 implied total is 12th. So first up we've got Beal, 7,900 on FanDuel, 8,300 on DK. Is his price down? Bum, 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 bum. It is, down 600 from his last game. Um, had two pretty big games against Toronto and has been big against them in the past. Uh, I really like that price. Um, I'm more than okay with this uh, for Beal. Had a 50-point game after the break, went for 65 before it. Um, coming off a bit of a stinker, but he's had you know a night off. I like Beal here. Um... At home against a you know a good Raptors team, uh, I'm I'm very interested in Beal. Otto Porter, 7,500 and 7,000. Porter has been at 39, 40, and 49 in his last three. Those are all really big games, but I feel like his salary has risen to a point where he's kind of scary. Ah, he's still pretty much in the same spot he usually is. Raptors really limit the threes, which concerns me a bit on Porter. Um, yeah, Porter's just a four. I, for some reason, I don't have a, a good feeling about him here. Sadoransky, 5,900 and 5,500. Uh, so you're looking minimum 30. Um, I think he's going to quiet down now and go back to Thomas Sadoransky levels. So I'm going to say that he is also a four. Ubre, 5,300 and 5,100. Has gotten up into the 30s. Um, I think the shift with uh, OG Ananobi might actually benefit him the most, just the way that it would change their rotations. 
Um, so I'm going to say that Ubre is actually a three. And then finally, we've got Markeith Morris. Although I do want to look and see, does Gortat normally play against them? Because I feel like he went, he either went off or barely played against them recently. Okay, so that's the game I was thinking of. That's way too long ago for it to be active in my head. So I don't know what I'm saying. Ignore Gortat. Markeith Morris is uh, 5,600 and 5,300. Um, I'd be more than okay with having some Markeith Morris. So let's go to Toronto. Raptors, 109.75 implied total would be fourth. Um, again, this should just be a better actual basketball game than fantasy basketball game. We've got DeRozan at 8,200, 7,500 on DK. Um, it's been a while since he's had like a really legitimate DeRozan game. But again, you know, this is a game where both teams want to win. You know, both teams should be taking it very seriously. So I'm okay saying DeRozan is a three. Uh, Kyle Lowry, uh, this game fits him a little bit better. 7,800 on FanDuel, 7,600 on DK. Uh, the problem is... I think he's just a little too expensive. Given the two, I think I prefer Lowry tonight, but it's close. I prefer Lowry in cash. Abaka, uh, I mean, his minutes have been crazy. He's down in the mid-20s now, except for this 34-point game that he had here. Uh, it's really hard to... It's really hard to make heads or tails of Abaka's playing time and his skill set right now. But he needs 26. Um, you know, he had three straight 30-point games. It's, you know, he's a four because I don't trust the playing time, but it wouldn't shock me if he had a good game. Van Vliet is 4,900 on FanDuel, 4,300 on DK. I, I don't really love it. I'm going to say that he's a four. I probably wouldn't go any lower than that. Jonas's minutes, you know, 20, 22, he's been all over the place. I don't really trust it, um, and I don't really like this game. So let's go to the Phoenix Suns hosting the Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh, I have the Thunder as 8.5 point favorites at home, or out on the road, rather. Uh, stop. I have the Suns as 8.5 point underdogs at home. They have the 18th highest implied total. Sometimes you just need to slow down. Uh, Devin Booker, 8,800 on FanDuel, 8,400 on DK. Um, you know, 45 is the threshold. He's been above that in two of his last three, with one of them being, or with the third game being a 62 pointer. Uh, I think he's starting to feel himself. He played 39 minutes and 41 minutes. He's coming off some rest. I know that the Thunder are. You know, kind of tough defensively, but on a per possession basis as a team, they've actually been uh, relatively neutral recently. Um, you know, no Roberson makes me pretty interested. I figure that Booker would probably get Paul George, but I guess we could check that out. When's the last time they played? It might not matter because uh, Roberson's probably healthy. January 7th. I don't know. NBA box score matchup new stats. At least I know how to get there now. So that game was already forgotten by me. January 7th. Okay, so this is going to be a representative look here. Who guarded Booker? It's a split of Ferguson, Josh Hustis, George, and Westbrook. All right. Okay, I can handle that. Um, I like Devin Booker. Uh, I'm going to say that he's a three. I think it's a good spot. Um, TJ Warren uh, didn't play in the most recent game, so keep an eye on him here. But for right now, I have him in. Uh, 7,100 on FanDuel, 6,400 on DK. 
Uh, I don't love it here for TJ Warren. Um, he's just a four. Alfred Payton at 7,200, uh, 6,800 on DK. I think Payton looks like a like a pretty solid cash um, play now that he is um, on the Suns. He's just steadily in this mid 30s range, and um, you know I'm not exactly worried about Westbrook's defense. So I think what uh, Alfred Payton is a pretty solid three for cash. Not a ton of upside for me in uh, GPP scenarios. Bender, 4,100 on FanDuel, 4,000 on DK. Uh, oddly enough, I'm okay with Bender. Um, I rarely am, but I think in a GPP, he could, you know, he's it could be 5 or it could be 45. Um, Oklahoma City gives up a ton of corner threes. Uh, Bender shoots 63% of his shots from three. Uh, an overwhelming majority in the corner. So, as a GPP run, uh, I think Bender is a three. Um, he's not safe at all in cash, but he could be a bullet that that really helps. And at forty one hundred, it re it really helps you fit in other stuff. Um, finally, Josh Jackson, fifty seven hundred on Fanduel, sixty two hundred. On DK, you're looking for like 30 plus. I uh, went for 52, and that's because most of the guys were just fouling out. Um, he was playing a little four on the at the end of the game, or a little five at the end of the game, which is ridiculous. But you know, 5700 is great. 6,000 would be 30 points. You know, he can get up there. Dude's not afraid to shoot, even though he's not a very good shooter. Um, I think Josh Jackson is probably a three. For OKC, um, it should come as no surprise that this is by far the best matchup on the board. I don't count the Golden State Atlanta one um, as the best matchup because I think that one's a little different. I honestly think that Oklahoma City has the best matchup on the board. Uh, the Suns are bad. 111.7 implied total is third. Um, again, you need to be a little wary of the blowout potential here. But let's start with Paul George, 8,700 on FanDuel, 9,000 on DK. Um, I think George is about as safe as it gets tonight. Um, a couple games in the mid-40s recently can get up into the 50s. Uh, I, would, I would like Paul George a lot in cash. I don't find him as appealing in uh, GPPs, but I think that he's just a straight three. Steven Adams. 7,300 on FanDuel, 7,200 on DK. He should be able to do whatever he wants to do in the paint. Um, he could have a really ridiculously huge um, rebounding game. My only concern is that he's such an incredible offensive rebounder, and I would expect the misses to be from Phoenix. I think I read a stat that like Adams would be the first person ever to average more than five offensive rebounds a game, but less than ten total rebounds a game. I could be I could be butchering that, but either way, Adams would need thirty six to hit value. Uh, I I think that he is a relatively safe play in cash, um, and I'll even have him a little bit in GPPs. Uh, there's no one like he's he's just gonna have his pick of the litter in the paint. Mello, six thousand on FanDuel, sixty one hundred on DK. I do need to neuter him a bit. Um, he's just sort of not the same guy in my that I have in my projections. Uh, that makes me a little bit happier. Um, he's six thousand on FanDuel, sixty one hundred on DK. So thirty is the goal. You know, hasn't really hit it. Honestly, you know, this is the kind of game where Melo probably pops a 38-pointer because he's going up against uh, the dregs of the league in Phoenix. Could be a game where they try to just get him involved, get him a little bit more, uh, you know, motivated, so to speak. So I'm going to say that Melo is a 3. Um, I'm hoping he could take advantage of the crappiness that is the Suns. Westbrook, 11-9 on FanDuel, 11-8 on DK. Um, 
man, it's got it's got to be hard to trust him. The Suns are atrocious. Have they played recently? Yeah, he went for 55 in January. Look, he can roast them. I just don't know if he's going to care enough to do it. Um, he's a three. I have no concerns with him other than that price tag. But the blowout potential is real, so you, you do have to be cognizant of it. Clippers, 117.25 implied total is second. Uh, they are hosting the Knicks, and they are nine-point favorites at home. Uh, no Gallo, again, he's already been ruled out. Not that that's any surprise. He's, he's permanently out. Um, so first up is Austin Rivers, 6,000 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DK. Uh, I don't mind him as much in cash. I don't see uh, like a ridiculous amount of upside in him at this price point, but I think that he's just a three just because of the minutes. Now, Lou Will, 8,000 on FanDuel, 8,100 on DK. I love him as per usual. Um, three of his last four games in the 40s. You know, with no Gallo, he's probably the best creator on the team. Um, so I think Lou Will is a three. Tobias Harris, uh, 7,500 on FanDuel, 7,500 on DK. I think this is an exceptional spot for him. Um, he's all over the map, whether it's a 27-point game or a 58-point game, but he can dial it up into the 40s, and the Knicks aren't really uh, any great shakes defensively, so I think Harris is a three. I think hosting or having a bunch of Clippers is, uh, is not a bad stance to take tonight. Uh, DeAndre, I don't have a ton of uh, like motivation for. Some minutes have been down, you know, playing 26, 23, even 30 is still kind of low for him. But it's either Cantor or, you know, Willie Reed. Nope, not Willie Reed. Uh, why can't I remember? Kylo Quinn. Whew. <laughs> it's either Cantor or Kylo Quinn. Um, he should be able to do whatever he wants against Cantor. But I just don't know how low, like how much he's going to be totally involved here. The Knicks aren't the worst rebounding team in the world, uh, so I think that DeAndre is just a four. Now, Taya Dosich. Um, he's played 28 minutes and 27 minutes in his last two, averaging 25 fantasy points. He's at 4,300, um, so I think there's a ton of upside in that number. I think Taya Dosich is a two in terms of a value play. Uh, I think he's relatively safe if he's getting that sort of minutes. And he has the ability to really um, to really blow that 4,300 number out of the water uh, just because of the additional playing time. I don't really have any interest in C.J. Williams. And uh, Montrez Harrell at 4,800. Um, you know, I'll say that he's a three. I wouldn't want a ton of him, but I would understand it. I think he's in a situation where he might get some extra minutes. And uh, if he can get into, like, the 25-plus range, I think that's pretty safe. Knicks, 108.25 implied total. Um, I don't love the Knicks, but there are going to be guys here that have good prices. And uh, I just don't trust them. I can't seem to figure out what they're going to do in this little tanking extravaganza that they're in. So we'll start with Tim Hardaway. 6,100 on FanDuel, 6,200 on DK. Um, look, he's a GPP only play. Dude's going to shoot. He can't stop himself. He just can't stop himself from missing either. Uh, I think that Hardaway is a four. We've got Emmanuel Moutier, 5,100 on FanDuel, 5,300 on DK. Uh, played 31 in the last game and put up 42. Uh, that's the sort of game you're looking for. Um, I don't know why. Yeah, yeah, 41. Um, at that price point, if he's going to get 28 plus minutes, you know, it's hard to not like him. Uh, I think he's an exceptional value, uh, but I'm only going to say that he's a three because it's hard to trust the Knicks. 
Frankie Smokes is a four. I can't imagine having him in more than one lineup or two lineups. Uh, Beasley, man, he's just he hasn't been there. He's down to 5,500. Um, so that would put you at 27. Um, it's a guy that could get hot. So I like the idea of Beasley in the GPPs, but he's still just uh, just a four for me. Trey Burke at 5,400, a four as well. Um, you know, he can dial it up. Again, this is a GPP guy, but he's been shooting the lights out, and I just don't expect that to continue. Uh, and it, you would need to basically pick the center that you would like here. Uh, Cantor and O'Quinn both getting like around 20 minutes. Um, O'Quinn's price, 4600 on FanDuel, I don't really love. Uh, I just probably wouldn't. I wouldn't want much of anything for these two guys. I, I just don't trust the Knicks and the tanking. It's too hard. Final game, Jazz hosting the Wolves. Jazz, 108.25 implied total is 8th. Um, they are 6.5 point favorites at home against the Wolves. Wolves on the back-to-back. -back. Uh, say hi to Riggs. He's uh, a little wound up for a Friday. I assume you guys can hear the dog barking. Whatever. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, 7,700 on FanDuel, 7,500 on DK. Uh, he hasn't gone off in a, in a while, but I think this is a pretty good spot. Um, I think he's a relatively safe cash play tonight, so I'm going to say that he's a three. Joe Engel, 6,200 and 5,700. Uh, matchup fits. They do give up a ton of... Th Minnesota gives up a ton of threes. Um... But, you know, you need more than 30 from Ingles, and uh, he can crater. Uh, he's a 4 for me, um, and I would say that he's GPP only. Rudy Gobert, 7,900 on FanDuel, 6,900 on DK. Uh, how has Gobert been against Minnesota in the past? Okay, nothing, nothing insane um, against them in October. I think Gobert's a three. Uh, I think he's, again, a relatively safe play. Minnesota on a back-to-back -back going from Portland to Utah and having to do, uh, you know, deal with the Utah elevation I think is a real thing. So I do like Gobert there. Um, Ricky Rubio, 6,500 on FanDuel, 5,900 on DK. Um, that's a pretty solid price for him. He's still working his way back, but he played you know, an average of 28 minutes in his last two. They've got a lot of games in a row with some rest. Uh, Rubio was really hot coming in before the break, uh, so I think that at 6,500, um, I think that's a great price for Rubio. I'm going to say that it's a three, particularly because this is a Ricky Rubio revenge game, so I'm sure that he's going to want this. Derek Favors, 5,300 on FanDuel, 5,500 on DK. Uh, you know, you need a pretty big 30-point-plus barrage out of him, and that can certainly happen. I like Favors here. Um, that's a three. I don't really have any interest in Crowder or O'Neal. So finally, it's Minnesota. Wolves, 101.75 implied total is 20th. Um... You know, Carl Anthony Towns went absolutely ham last night. Uh, he went pretty ham for 60 uh, the game before that. So, you know, I'm a little nervous about going to Utah, but I think Towns is really trying to uh, exert himself on the team with Jimmy Butler out. Um, but against the Jazz, who are already just an exceptional defensive team, um, it's going to be a tall order. I think Minnesota is in a really tough spot. They have the worst matchup on the board. Um, why is that highlighted in green? Sorry. 
Yeah, that looks much better now. Um, I think Minnesota is the worst matchup on the board, both with travel and just simply playing the Jazz. So I don't like Wiggins. Um, for me, he's a four. Um, Towns at 10-1. I just have a hard time seeing him get to you know, 50 plus points against Gobert on the back to back. Um, so for me, he's a four. I will largely be fading this entire portion of the game. Um, I don't want to make my bed with the Wolves. If they play well, you know, I'll tip my hat and move on. Uh, yeah, I don't, I really don't like any part of this. Teague at 7,500 is too much. Gibson at 6,000 is too much. Uh, Bielitsa at 5,300 on FanDuel I think is at least feasible. Um, you know, you can get to 27, which he hit. I um, mean, he had a 35-pointer a couple nights ago. So I think Bielitsa is the only redeeming quality of this game. Um, but if you want to get... A little cute I do have one thought process from it and that would be uh, gorgeous dong uh, Gorgi Zhang um, just in case you know the, the Jazz do play a lot of traditional bigs a lot of favors a lot of go bear so it's possible we see a couple additional minutes of uh, gorgeous dong I'm gonna say that he's a four just because it's uh, you know, you're going out on a, a pretty big limb but I could see him as a really sneaky GPP play particularly on DK where he's only 3,400. So that's it. That's all I've got right now. We're going to dump these in, <clears throat> and then uh, that's going to be it. We'll be going live tonight uh, starting at 6. Should be a good one. It might not be as good as last night's ridiculous live stream where we got some sort of... Um, lady of the night youtube bot real person who knows what to show up uh, offering her services for a hundred dollars which was just you know didn't didn't see it coming let's just put it that way it got entertaining especially on a four game slate where there's only so much you could talk about all right so for FanDuel, a lot of vooch a lot of beasley which i'm gonna have to nerf but beal and harrell Moody A. Okay. So I want to start with a Wes Matthews lineup. And then maybe Dwight Powell. Which gives me Vooch. Okay, so... That might be a little bit too much there. What if I walk back off of Wes Matthews and do Barnes? That I kind of like. Kemba, Moody, A. Beal, Mitchell, Barnes, Nawaba, Powell, and Vooch, and then it's just rolling the dice on Blake. Um, because I can certainly see Blake being a part of a GPP winning lineup. It's just he's been so unreliable that it's hard to really like I couldn't I wouldn't want it if it was the only thing that I was running. I think that would be a little too risky. We'll check out DraftKings now. Bump up the rando and go. Yeah, a lot of Jabari, a lot of Gobert, a lot of Rubio. I like it. That 4,700 price point for Jabari is nice. It's interesting to see so much Giannis. Um, I like that on DraftKings. It's rare that I see someone fly up like that at his price point. 
So if I were putting one together, I would probably start with Jabari and Giannis, grab Rubio. Um, who else do I need? Wes Matthews or Ted Dosich. No sign of Wes, so I might need to walk back. Uh, let's see if I grab Teo first. There are no Wes Matthews lineups that go with that, but I'd say probably Jarrell Martin. So something like that, Rubio, Dunn, Giannis, Martin, Drummond, Taya Dosich, O'Quinn, Harrell. Like, I think that would be a pretty fun lineup. Um, this is coming up with a lot of Kyle O'Quinn. So that might be something to look into a little bit deeper. But I think DraftKings is going to be the more fun spot tonight. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. I know this is a long one, but 10 games is tough to go through. You guys know the drill. Like, subscribe, Twitter, Reddit, whatever. Um, I'll be back live in, uh, what, 10 hours? And um, uh, if you guys have any questions in the interim, you know, feel free to reach out. Best of luck. I'll talk to you later.